if you are mindful of all of these things and your baby is still crying, then I will refer you to, once again, to Dr. Harvey Karp's five S's. I talked about it in my video about the fourth trimester generally, and um, I will uh, talk to you guys about it now because it's just, it's spectacular and brilliant. And, you know, look up Dr. Karp's website, happiestbaby.com. Uh, Google five S's, Dr. Harvey Karp, and you'll get videos where people are demonstrating how to do the five S's. Uh, the idea behind the five S's is that human babies are born about three months too early, which is why we call the first three months the fourth trimester. And why is that? It's because our brains and our skulls are getting too big to fit through the birth canal. So we come into the world, all of us, premature, as it were. And we need this adjustment period where, you know, where the baby is wondering where the hell it is, what the hell is going on, and why, you know, in this, why whatever level of consciousness it had in the womb, you know, why the conditions in the womb are, have disappeared, and why he's thrust into this new world that is unfamiliar and unlike the world from which he emerged. So the five S's are all about mim mimicking or recreating the conditions of the womb. And you will be shocked how effective they are at soothing your baby when everything else fails, when it's not hunger, when it's not gassiness, when it's not a dirty diaper, when it's not a good nap, uh, when it's not too hot, too cold, hurt or sick. You know he's not hurt. You know he's not sick. You know, you've checked for little... I don't know, little bits of mom's hair wrapped around its toe and it's actually, that's causing it some pain or discomfort. It could be the craziest things, but if you've ruled out everything else, it might just be this existential angst in a way where the baby is dealing with the fourth trimester, wondering what the heck is going on and needs to be soothed. So the five ways to soothe the baby, the five ways to mimic or recreate the conditions of the womb are to swaddle the baby. Look it up and learn to swallow swaddle or just buy what we did which are a bunch of sleep sacks that when it's time to put your baby down for a nap you put it in the sleep sack it you know there's a velcro thing that you know binds the arms down or something it's kind of like a, a sleep sack basically to sleep in but it swaddles your baby for you uh, or just learn how to swaddle the baby because you know when you have the arms down like this first of all there's this reflex where the baby can sometimes wake itself up or you know startle itself by smacking itself in the head with these limbs that are flailing around so it helps with that uh, but it also kind of mimics the cozy tight-knit uh, conditions uh, space in the womb where it uh, you know it's just used to living that way so it reminds it of, of the place that it came from um, the next S is to swing or sway the baby and that's because you know, the baby was used to bobbing and swaying in mom's belly when she went about her business throughout the day. Uh, Dr. Karp will tell you that it's interesting. The most effective thing is uh, not even a swaying, but e like swinging, but like very quick and short movements where you're really not even moving the newborn more than an inch uh, either way and kind of tiny little quick movements. And that seemed to work for us too. I'm not sure exactly why that is because mom isn't necessarily doing that unless she's like, you know, I don't know, um, working her core or something, you know, doing side twists or whatever. But um, that does seem to be effective. But, you know, swinging could also be effective. Swaying is also effective. Movement can often be effective. Just holding them and walking around the house doing this, that could be effective. Swinging and swaying motions help because, again, that's what they were used to uh, growing up in the womb. Uh, the next S is a sideways or stomach position because that's how babies come into the world. They come out head first and you know, tr conventional tr pregnancies, um, the baby is head down in the womb, kind of in a downward position, uh, maybe on its stomach. Uh, you know, obviously it doesn't know how it's oriented spatially, but it's kind of used to that posture or positioning. So you would be surprised with your newborn baby. You know, even having it over your shoulder is a form of having it on its stomach on its stomach, but having it on, on its stomach, even in your arms like this face down or on its side, but kind of on its stomach and then even kind of tilted downward a little bit. Um, not a whole lot, but just a little bit um, simulating the, the, the positioning that it had in the womb. Uh, that's the next S and it's effective. Sucking is the fourth S. It could, you know, that's, everybody knows that. I mean, it's very soothing to a baby to do that, to suckle on mom's breast, to suck its thumb, to suck a pacifier, to suck your clean thumb, um, to suck on a lot of things. Um, and uh, 
that's helpful. Um, I would try to avoid introducing pacifiers early on though, uh, for reasons I discussed in the breastfeeding videos, because it, it may interfere in the very early going with uh, mom and baby getting used to a good system of breastfeeding and getting a proper latch. It may cause nipple confusion. I think there's some debate among experts about this. You know, talk to them and talk to your doctor and decide for yourself. I just think, you know, I said before, wait maybe six weeks, and I think that's maybe the advice that's at least some experts give. I don't know if it's AAP or not. Uh, but if not six weeks, because I think Dr. Carp is, you know, I, I was looking at his website, I think, for the first time uh, this morning. Um, uh, and... Uh, you know, he talks about sucking being one of the S's and he says, you know, he, he didn't say to avoid it. Um, uh, it may or may not be a problem. You know, my personal advice, and if I were having another baby and the next time we do this, I, I would not introduce pacifiers for at least the first days or weeks. You know, let's get the baby used to latching onto mom's breast and nursing, um, and, and then we can introduce the passy later. But uh, that's just us. I mean, I would give him my clean thumb to suck on. My son did that all the time. You know, it was very soothing for him. Um, or he's obviously going to be suckling when he's nursing. Um, uh, but uh, that's the next S. And then the fifth S is shushing. Um, and um, uh, that's because the womb is actually a fairly loud place. So, you know, having your baby like this, you know, on its side swaddled and then bringing him up and shh fairly loudly in the ear. Not so loud to blow out an eardrum, but louder than you might think. It's not a soft shushing, it's a, just a moderate, loud enough shushing, and because that's because the womb was actually a very loud place. Dr. Karp's website said that it was louder than a vacuum cleaner running 24-7. Um, but you know, the, here's the difference, and I think Dr. Karp would agree with me. These are relatively constant, rhythmic, even melodic kind of noises. So that's why white noise machines work well. Um, in the early going with our son, we even had a dust buster that we just would turn on. And then we got this um, uh, white noise machine. Um, and we've been using ocean sound since our son was a baby. But it's just like a constant, it's the same sound. Um, and it's true. The, 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 the existence of sound does not appear to interfere with their sleep. In fact, it may even help. And even as an adult, I can attest, to, I can tell you, when I have that sound machine in our bedroom, I sleep better. Uh, it, it blocks out other weird clattering, you know, sudden jarring noises. Um, Cause I don't think it's the existence of sound. I think it's uh, these punctures or these, you know, these punctuating sounds or differentials in sound where if it's, it's, it's quiet and then it's the, the, the silence is punctuated with some kind of a loud sound. You know, somebody drops something or somebody laughs loudly. Um, I think it's why, you know, I remember as a kid too, I, I could sometimes fall asleep, you know, if uh, there was a dinner party and I was in, they put us, uh, I was a young kid and they would put us in a, a bedroom, turn off the lights, and you can kind of hear a low hum of adult conversation in the background, and that didn't seem to uh, bother you, but I, I would just submit that that's different than being in a loud, you know, daytime or just a loud, raucous you know, boisterous pro party going on with loud ass music. And, you know, it's not just rhythmic, it's, you know, music. So it changes in tone and tenor um, and it, it fluctuates. And then someone, like I said, people are screaming and laughing and then some, you know, just sounds that are clashing and jarring. Uh, I, I don't think that's conducive to anybody's sleep, including newborns and babies. And I, I can't imagine that Dr. Karp or any pediatrician would, would tell you that it's actually okay for them to sleep in that environment. But uh, shushing to soothe the baby reminded, of, reminded somewhat of the sounds that it uh, heard in the womb. And using a white noise uh, machine of sort, um, I think those are good things and they can be very effective. Now, looking at Dr. Karp's website earlier, uh, apparently he was um, not so keen on ocean sounds because uh, they they weren't quite they weren't as similar to, as other sounds to the sounds of the baby heard in the womb, uh, and that's fair enough. I mean, it, it worked well enough for us, and it uh, still does. But you know, maybe there's stuff out there that works better. 
um, look at sound machines and, you know, read up on, you know, I don't know. I would just say, you know, pick a sound and then just kind of stick with it, you know, um, whether it's, uh, you know, um, just true white noise, just static white noise, or it's ocean sounds. You know, I, I wouldn't change it. Uh, just kind of use the same sounds every time it's uh, time for a nap. Um, so those are the five S's. And you know what? I'm not going to say anything more. I've said enough. Look for the videos online. Look at the Harvey Karp's website. Uh, Google Harvey Karp and the five S's. Uh, look at those videos yourself. You'll see people demonstrating how to do them. Um, but it, they're, it, they're miracle workers. I mean, it's a miracle worker, the five S's. And it, it, I think it really hits the nail on the head uh, as far as what else could be bothering your baby if everything else is, seems to be okay and you're still getting fussiness or crying. I really think that's it. They're just out of the womb and they're wondering what the hell is going on. And then if you can kind of remind them in, in these uh, soothing ways that they're not far from where they were, you know, uh, and obviously, you know, they're, they're being held and caressed and loved on by mommy or daddy at the time. Uh, they'll just calm right down, you know, and they'll, and they'll go down for their nap when it's time.